That's right. Discipline isn't just about rules and rigidity. It's a beautiful art that can lead us to growth, success, and all-around personal development. I don't know about you, but I've always found that a little dose of inspiration goes a long way when it comes to staying on track with my goals and dreams. If you want to become successful in life, young man, he said, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Number two, practice OQP, only quality people. Develop your communication skills, because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. What you want now and what you want most. The more you sweat in training, the less you bleed in battle. Discipline is doing what you know needs to be done, even if you don't want to do it. The key to achieving your goals is to stay focused, stay disciplined, and stay committed. The distance between your dreams and reality is called discipline. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. Self-discipline begins with the mastery of your thoughts. If you don't control what you think, you can't control what you do. The successful warrior is the average man with laser-like focus. You must have a level of discontent to feel the urge to want to grow. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. Success is a marathon, not a sprint. It's the small, consistent steps that lead to greatness. Discipline is the muscle of achievement. Discipline is the soul of an army. It makes small numbers formidable. Success doesn't come from what you do occasionally, it comes from what you do consistently. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act but a habit. Your habits will either make or break you. The chains of habit are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. Discipline is the master key to riches. It does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. The best way to predict the future is to create it. Small daily improvements are the key to staggering long-term results. Motivation gets you started, habit keeps you going. Discipline is the difference between ordinary and extraordinary. Habits change into character. The first step toward change is awareness. The second step is acceptance. Discipline is the bridge between who you are and who you want to be. The secret to permanently breaking any bad habit is to love something greater than the habit. Change your habits, change your life. Successful people aren't born, they're made by consistent hard work and discipline. Don't let your habits become the bars of your own prison. The power to change is in your hands. Discipline is the fuel for achievement. The difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. So once said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist, or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here, I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. One of two pains, the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. It's not that some people have willpower and some don't. It's that some people are ready to change, and others are not. A disciplined mind leads to happiness, and an undisciplined mind leads to suffering. Discipline is the cornerstone of progress. The only thing stopping you from achieving your goals is the story you keep telling yourself about why you can't achieve them. You will never always be motivated, so you must learn to be disciplined. The road to success runs uphill through discipline. The pain of discipline is far less than the pain of regret. Don't let today's disappointments cast a shadow on tomorrow's dreams. Discipline is just choosing between what you want now and what you want most. The only limits that exist are the ones you place on yourself. Stay focused and never give up, even when life gives you every reason to. Discipline is the strongest form of self-love. It is ignoring current pleasures for bigger rewards to come. Success is a matter of understanding and religiously practicing specific simple habits that always lead to success. The future depends on what you do today. Success is not in what you have, but in who you have become. Discipline is the key to unlocking your potential. You don't have to be great to start, but you have to start to be great. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Success is not for the chosen few, but for the few who choose it. Don't watch the clock, do what it does. Keep going.
Discipline is the daily practice of turning your dreams into reality. Discipline is the navigator of your ship towards your desired destination. Discipline is the key to success. Enthusiasm gets you started, but it's discipline that keeps you going. Success is liking yourself, liking what you do, and liking how you do it. The best revenge is massive success. Challenges are what make life interesting and overcoming them is what makes life meaningful. Success is the result of perfection, hard work, learning from failure, loyalty, and persistence. The biggest risk is not taking any risk. In a world that's changing quickly, the only strategy that is guaranteed to fail is not taking risks. Don't be pushed around by the fears in your mind. Be led by the dreams in your heart. The only limit to our realization of tomorrow will be our doubts of today. You are the only one who can limit your greatness. Remember, you are enough. With self-discipline, all things are possible. Need to kick your willpower into high gear. Improving your self-discipline is half the battle. Self-discipline is the ability to do what needs to be done to reach your goals, even when it's hard or inconvenient or you're just not feeling it. Stop wishing, start doing, and next time you fix your lips to say, I wish, perhaps consider replacing it with, I will. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. We all have dreams, but in order to make dreams come into reality, it takes an awful lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. Nothing will work unless you do. You are not defeated when you lose. You are defeated when you quit. There is no luck except where there is discipline. Day by day, what you choose, what you think, and what you do is who you become. The only bad workout is the one you didn't do. What you do today can improve all your tomorrows. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Self-discipline is when your conscience tells you to do something and you don't talk back. With self-discipline, most anything is possible. If the plan doesn't work, change the plan, not the goal. My rituals keep me consistent, and consistency is the key to achieving goals. Today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can accomplish what others can't. If you could get up the courage to begin, you have the courage to succeed. Self-discipline is the ability to make yourself do what you should do, when you should do it, whether you feel like it or not. The price of excellence is discipline. Self-discipline starts with the mastery of your thoughts. If you don't control what you think, you can't control what you do. Discipline is choosing between what you want now and what you want most. Don't stop until you're proud. Self-discipline is an incredibly important trait to form, cultivate, and continuously work on to improve yourself and improve your life. Becoming a disciplined person can be life-changing, which is why we are going to talk today about how to improve your self-discipline. Self-discipline can help improve every aspect of your life. Having better than average levels of self-discipline can help you achieve both daily tasks better and faster but also help you achieve large and lifelong goals. Improving self-discipline will help your career, physical and mental health, and any dreams you have. But as you probably know it is difficult to improve your self-discipline. Becoming a disciplined person is a great goal but do you know that to do to achieve it? Identify where you can improve. The first and one of the most important things you can do to work towards improving your self-discipline is to identify where you can improve. What aspects of self-discipline are your weakest points? Grab a notebook and start writing. Be honest with yourself, lying to yourself will not help you achieve this goal of improvement. Do you spend too much time on social media? Struggle to keep focusing. Do you have a hard time saying no to others? There's probably something that immediately comes to mind when you think about where you are lacking self-discipline. If you are struggling to think of where you are lacking or where you have areas to improve them look at these 12 time-wasting habits. They may be able to help you identify where you have opportunities for improvement. Determine what motivates you. The next step for improving your self-discipline is to determine what motivates you to succeed. This is essential for becoming a disciplined person. By thinking about and identifying what motivates you then that sets you up to be able to remind yourself of that item when you find yourself struggling for self-improvement. Remember this. I have found it's very helpful to get a foam-based poster board or even a canvas and paint pens and write out what it is that motivates you. It doesn't have to be overly artistic or detailed just writing, family, or, my dreams, will help remind you every day of what motivates you. Also you don't need to hang it up anywhere others will see it, even putting it in your closet or bathroom will work. Just put it somewhere where you can get your daily dose of motivation. 
Also you don't need to hang it up anywhere others will see it, even putting it in your closet or bathroom will work. Just put it somewhere where you can get your daily dose of motivation. Minimize distractions and temptations. Distractions and temptations are something that everyone is guilty of falling for on a regular basis. Realistically you will not be able to eliminate every distraction or temptation that is in your life. However, you can work towards Success is not a comfortable procedure. It is a very uncomfortable thing to attempt. So you got to get comfortable being uncomfortable if you ever want to be successful. You got to get real doggish. You got to get downright funky if you want to make it. Now like I was telling you before, if you want to be ordinary, you ain't even got to listen to me. Just go on about your business. If you think ordinary is cool, ain't no problem. But if you are sitting in this room and you have extraordinary aspirations, then you're going to have to do extra. This goal as much as the big picture steps are. What you do every day will be the actual practice of the self-discipline and each day is an opportunity to continue to improve your self-discipline. Use that knowledge as you plan each of your days. This is two parts the details and the goals. Daily goals help keep you in line with your larger goals and sticking to these daily goals is a great way to improve yourself and become a disciplined person. And achieving these daily goals requires a lot of self-discipline and allow you to practice and grow your self-discipline as your everyday goals get closer to your life goals. The second part is the detailed daily plan. As you are really committing and focusing on improving yourself it is important to be very detailed in your daily plans. This helps keep you away from temptations and distractions and in a way forces you to stay on track. Turn these steps into habits to become a disciplined person. Committing for a week or two to motivating yourself and creating daily plans is great but unless you put in the time and effort to make these permanent habits in your life they will never stick. So take the time and effort to really focus on this goal of self-improvement for a whole month. And then at the beginning of each month evaluate the previous month and being honest with yourself if you are putting an honest effort and focus into your self-discipline and constantly improving it. But be patient with yourself and remember that this is a lifelong process and there is always room to continue to improve yourself. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishments. We all have dreams. But in order to make dreams come into reality, it takes an awful lot of determination, dedication, self-discipline, and effort. It's easy when you feel overwhelmed to just ignore the problem, indefinitely. You walk into a room and the piles of clutter just seem too great. Or you open that closet door and you shudder at the thought of cleaning out the junk, even though you can barely push the door shut. It's easy to close the door even figuratively speaking, and simply walk away and do something more pleasant. But, does that really make your life easier? Is life more simple and less stressful when we ignore the problem at hand in favor of doing something that brings us comfort and enjoyment? Probably not. In fact, I dare say, very rarely will ignoring a problem ever make the problem better, and it might even make the problem grow even bigger. Self-discipline is basically doing what you know needs to be done even when you don't really feel like it. Not everyone struggles with self-discipline or struggles in the same way. You might have self-discipline in some areas and struggle in other areas. Some of us like doing laundry. Others hate doing the dishes. X. But, does that really make your life easier? Is life more simple and less stressful when we ignore the problem at hand in favor of doing something that brings us comfort and enjoyment? Probably not. In fact, I dare say, very rarely will ignoring a problem ever make the problem better, and it might even make the problem grow even bigger. Self-discipline. Self-discipline is basically doing what you know needs to be done even when you don't really feel like it. Not everyone struggles with self-discipline or struggles in the same way. You might have self-discipline in some areas and struggle in other areas. Some of us like doing laundry. Others hate doing the dishes. Clutter and messy piles of whatever, laundry, old books, dishes, etc. are essentially decisions that have not been made. Chronic stacks of dirty dishes are the most basic you have not made up your mind to just get it done. Maybe you feel overwhelmed because you didn't do it immediately and now every dish in the house is dirty. And so you avoid it. Piles of paper on your desk mean you have not decided what needs to be filed and what needs to go into the trash. Too many clothes you no longer wear means you have no made the decision to let things go, for whatever reason. Your mind, make a decision, to go through the mess and get it done. Even when you don't really feel like it. True self-discipline, the kind that stays with you and is life-changing, means you face those piles on a daily or otherwise frequent basis so the piles do not grow. 
It's so much easier to clean a small pile than it is to clean a huge one. Just like I always say, it's easier to clean a tidy house than it is to clean a messy house. X. But, does that really make your life easier? Is life more simple and less stressful when we ignore the problem at hand in favor of doing something that brings us comfort and enjoyment? Probably not. In fact, I dare say, very rarely will ignoring a problem ever make the problem better, and it might even make the problem grow even bigger. Self-discipline. Self-discipline is basically doing what you know needs to be done even when you don't really feel like it. Not everyone struggles with self-discipline or struggles in the same way. You might have self-discipline in some areas and struggle in other areas. Some of us like doing laundry. Others hate doing the dishes. Clutter and messy piles of whatever, laundry, old books, dishes, etc. are essentially decisions that have not been made. Chronic stacks of dirty dishes are the most basic, you have not made up your mind to just get it done. Maybe you feel overwhelmed because you didn't do it immediately and now every dish in the house is dirty. And so you avoid it. Piles of paper on your desk mean you have not decided what needs to be filed and what needs to go into the trash. Too many clothes you no longer wear means you have no made the decision to let things go, for whatever reason. Self-discipline means make up your mind, make a decision, to go through the mess and get it done. Even when you don't really feel like it. True self-discipline, the kind that stays with you and is life-changing, means you face those piles on a daily or otherwise frequent basis so the piles do not grow. It's so much easier to clean a small pile than it is to clean a huge one. Just like I always say, it's easier to clean a tidy house than it is to clean a messy house. Self-disciple means doing what you know needs to be done even when you don't feel like it. A time to clean. 30-day challenge. I, in no way, have perfected the art of self-discipline. There are some things I try and avoid at all costs. But, I do know how much better I feel mentally and emotionally when I tend to my tasks as needed rather than when the small mess has turned into a mountain. And sometimes I wonder why I make life so much harder for myself when it would really be so much easier if I just always did what I know I should do. In the winter months we spend almost every day, all day, in our downstairs family room. The room is cozy and warm because of the fireplace. It's our favorite place in the house, during the cold months. X. But, does that really make your life easier? Is life more simple and less stressful when we ignore the problem at hand in favor of doing something that brings us comfort and enjoyment? Probably not. In fact, I dare say, very rarely will ignoring a problem ever make the problem better, and it might even make the problem grow even bigger. Self-discipline. Self-discipline is basically doing what you know needs to be done even when you don't really feel like it. Not everyone struggles with self-discipline or struggles in the same way. You might have self-discipline in some areas and struggle in other areas. Some of us like doing laundry. Others hate doing the dishes. Clutter and messy piles of whatever, laundry, old books, dishes, etc. are essentially decisions that have not been made. Chronic stacks of dirty dishes are the most basic, you have not made up your mind to just get it done. Maybe you feel overwhelmed because you didn't do it immediately and now every dish in the house is dirty. And so you avoid it. Piles of paper on your desk mean you have not decided what needs to be filed and what needs to go into the trash. Too many clothes you no longer wear means you have no made the decision to let things go, for whatever reason. Self-discipline means make up your mind, make a decision, to go through the mess and get it done. Even when you don't really feel like it. True self-discipline, the kind that stays with you and is life-changing, means you face those piles on a daily or otherwise frequent basis so the piles do not grow. It's so much easier to clean a small pile than it is to clean a huge one. Just like I always say, it's easier to clean a tidy house than it is to clean a messy house. Self-disciple means doing what you know needs to be done even when you don't feel like it. A time to clean. 30-day challenge at avirtuouswoman.org I, in no way, have perfected the art of self-discipline. There are some things I try and avoid at all costs. But, I do know how much better I feel mentally and emotionally when I tend to my tasks as needed rather than when the small mess has turned into a mountain. And sometimes I wonder why I make life so much harder for myself when it would really be so much easier if I just always did what I know I should do. Maybe you've wondered the same thing about yourself. In the winter months we spend almost every day, all day, in our downstairs family room. 
The room is cozy and warm because of the fireplace. It's our favorite place in the house, during the cold months. We spend very little time in the family room during the spring and summer. The problem with that has been pretty consistent over the years. Our homeschool stuff is in the family room. So, for half of the school year we do most of our schoolwork in the family. Undisciplined boys grow up to be undisciplined men. Do you know the problem you're gonna have? Yes. Undisciplined men end up in the hospital or in a prison. Or they end up in a grave. That's what happens to undisciplined men. Not put back where it goes in the family room, school closet, desk, bookcase. What area of your home life do you lack self-discipline? Identifying the problem is the first step in making lasting change. The good news is that Jesus will help every step of the way. Think about which area of your life is most lacking in self-discipline. What steps do you need to take to make changes? Remember that small steps of change will lead to greater success. Baby steps. Pray about making hard decisions, about what things you should keep, preserve, or let pick up a journal and write down your thoughts about what he has shown you go. Choose an area in your home you want to tackle. I'll be working in my living and dining rooms today. Fill at least one bag or box full of stuff to give away. Take a picture of your bag. Share it on Facebook or Instagram. Use hashtag. Leave a comment below about what you chose to get rid of and anything else God has laid on your heart. Do your best to wake up early tomorrow and spend time in prayer. Use your prayer journal. Discipline came up as number one. Discipline is a subject that gathers a lot of interest. Consciously or subconsciously, I think we all know at some level that our level of discipline is the difference between falling into bad habits and staying where we are or developing good habits that will allow us to move closer to where we want to be. At dawn, when you have trouble getting out of bed, tell yourself, I have to go to work, as a human being. What do I have to complain of, if I'm going to do what I was born for, the things I was brought into the world to do? Or is this what I was created for? To huddle under the blankets and stay warm. Discipline is the bridge between goals and accomplishment. For a man to conquer himself is the first and noblest of all victories. Quote. What lies in our power to do, lies in our power not to do. You have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. Most powerful is he who has himself in his own power. He who cannot obey himself will be commanded. That is the nature of living creatures. Mastering others is strength. Mastering yourself is true power. It is better to conquer self than to win a thousand battles. Do not train a child to learn by force or harshness, but direct them to it by what amuses their minds, so that you may be better able to discover with accuracy the peculiar bent of the genius of each. No matter how old you are now, you are never too young or too old for success or going after what you want. Here's a short list of people who accomplished great things at different ages. 1. Helen Keller, at the age of 19 months, became deaf and blind. But that didn't stop her. She was the first deaf and blind person to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. 2. Mozart was already competent on keyboard and violin, he composed from the age of 5. 3. Shirley Temple was 6 when she became a movie star on, Bright Eyes. 4. Anne Frank was 12 when she wrote the diary of Anne Frank. 5. Magnus Carlsen became a chess grandmaster at the age of 13. 6. Nadia Comaneci was a gymnast from Romania that scored 7 perfect 10.0 and won 3 gold medals at the Olympics at age 14. 7. Tenzin Gyatso was formally recognized as the 14th Dalai Lama in November 1950, at the age of 15. 8. Pele, a soccer superstar, was 17 years old when he won the World Cup in 1958 with Brazil. 9. Elvis was a superstar by age 19. 10. John Lennon was 20 years and Paul McCartney was 18 when the Beatles had their first concert in 1961. 11. Jesse Owens was 22 when he won four gold medals in Berlin 1936. 12. Beethoven was a piano virtuoso by age 23. 13. Isaac Newton wrote Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica at age 24. 14. Roger Bannister was 25 when he broke the four-minute mile record. 15. Albert Einstein was 26 when he wrote The Theory of Relativity. 16. Lance E. Armstrong was 27 when he won the Tour de France. 17. Michelangelo created two of the greatest sculptures, David, and Pieta, by age 28. 18. Alexander the Great, by age 29, had created one of the largest empires of the ancient world. 
19. J.K. Rowling was 30 years old when she finished the first manuscript of Harry Potter. 20. Amelia Earhart was 31 years old when she became the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. 2. 1. Oprah was 32 when she started her talk show, which has become the highest rated program of its kind. 22. Edmund Hillary was 33 when he became the first man to reach Mount Everest. 23. Martin Luther King Jr. was 34 when he wrote the speech, I Have a Dream. 24. Marie Curie was 35 years old when she got nominated for a Nobel Prize in Physics. 25. The Wright brothers, Orville 32, and Wilbur 36, invented and built the world's first successful airplane and making the first controlled, powered and sustained heavier-than-air human flight. 26. Vincent van Gogh was 37 when he died virtually unknown, yet his paintings today are worth millions. 27. Neil Armstrong was 38 when he became the first man to set foot on the moon. 28. Mark Twain was 40 when he wrote, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer, and 49 years old when he wrote, Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. 29. Christopher Columbus was 41 when he discovered the Americas. 30. Rosa Parks was 42 when she refused to obey the bus driver's order to give up her seat to make room for a white passenger. 31. John F. Kennedy was 43 years old when he became President of the United States. 32. Henry Ford was 45 when the Ford T came out. 33. Suzanne Collins was 46 when she wrote, The Hunger Games. 34. Charles Darwin was 50 years old when his book on the origin of species came out. 35. Leonardo da Vinci was 51 years old when he painted the Mona Lisa. 36. Abraham Lincoln was 52 when he became president. 37. Ray Kroc was 53 when he bought the McDonald's franchise and took it to unprecedented levels. 38. Dr. Seuss was 54 when he wrote, The Cat in the Hat. 40. Chesley. Sully. Sullenberger III was 57 years old when he successfully ditched U.S. Airways Flight 1549 in the Hudson River in 2009. All of the 155 passengers aboard the aircraft survived. 41. Colonel Harlan Sanders was 61 when he started the KFC franchise. 42. J.R.R. Tolkien was 62 when the Lord of the Ring books came out. 43. Ronald Reagan was 69 when he became president of the U.S. 44. Jack LaLanne at age 70 handcuffed, shackled, towed 70 rowboats. 45. Nelson Mandela was 76 when he became president. The really important kind of freedom involves attention, and awareness, and discipline, and effort, and being able truly to care about other people and to sacrifice for them, over and over, in myriad petty little unsexy ways, every day. True freedom is impossible without a mind made free by discipline. Self-respect is the root of discipline the sense of dignity grows. With the ability to say no to oneself, your kids require you most of all to love them for who they are, not to spend your whole time trying to correct them. Class is an aura of confidence that is being sure without being cocky. Class has nothing to do with money. Class never runs scared. It is self-discipline and self-knowledge. It's the sure-footedness that comes with having proved you can meet life. Self-control is the chief element in self-respect, and self-respect is the chief element in courage. You will never have a greater or lesser dominion than that over yourself. Dot the height of a man's success is gauged by his self-mastery. The depth of his failure by his self-abandonment. And this why is discipline important? Discipline teaches us to operate by principle rather than desire. Saying no to our impulses, even the ones that are not inherently sinful, puts us in control of our appetites rather than vice versa. It deposes our lust and permits truth, virtue, and integrity to rule our minds instead. Law is the expression of eternal justice. He who cannot establish dominion over himself will have no dominion over others. Where did we ever get the crazy idea that in order to make children do better, first we have to make them feel worse? Think of the last time you felt humiliated or treated unfairly. Did you feel like cooperating or doing better? When you master yourself, you can succeed at anything. The key to mastering your thoughts and actions is developing self-discipline. Did you know the most successful people have gotten to where they are today because they have learned to practice self-discipline? Let's start with the basics. The word self-discipline is actually made up of two parts. The noun, discipline, means, training that corrects, molds, or perfects the mental faculties or moral character. The, self, 
In self-discipline means you have the willpower to do these things on your own, without someone telling you to do them. So self-discipline means you control your feelings and even do hard things so you can be better and have more prosperity. Self-discipline is, the ability to control one's feelings and overcome one's weaknesses, the ability to pursue what one thinks is right despite temptations to abandon it. Quote, Self-discipline is the ability to control yourself and to make yourself work hard or behave in a particular way without needing anyone else to tell you what to do. Say this to yourself every day, if not over, until I win. Not over till I win. Not over till I get through. Not over till I get over. Not over till I get what I want. Y'all can't open the day, look out. I'm gonna come back and take the hinges off. That's, that's how you gotta do that. You got to have that kind of courage, that type of determination. You wanna make it happen? It's you. But you've got to take personal responsibility to make it happen. When you move your life and career onto the fast track. Controlling our feelings in the moment so we can have something better later takes hard work. It involves delayed gratification, which is not acting on your impulses. It is doing what you have to do now so you can do what you want to do later. Having the ability to discipline yourself has many benefits. Self-discipline puts you on the fast track to accomplishing your goals because you are more focused on what is important and less distracted by things that get in the way. It helps reduce stress and anxiety, which often come from procrastination, wasting time, or not having a plan to follow. Self-control makes you feel more confident in your abilities to accomplish things, which leads to living a better lifestyle and becoming your best self. Self-discipline accelerates personal improvement in all areas of our lives, including physical and mental health, education, career, financial independence, and relationships. Research shows that students who have more self-discipline, regardless of IQ, gain more knowledge, make fewer careless mistakes, and perform better than those who do not. In the workplace, research shows that self-discipline has positive outcomes, including higher income, the feeling of achievement in one's career, and a higher rate of accomplishing one's goals. How do you know if you lack self-discipline? There are some signs to look for. One sign is that you find yourself making excuses for falling short on things. With self-discipline, almost anything is possible. Self-discipline is, indeed, regarded as one of the keys to success. Many people attribute self-discipline as having determination and fortitude. That means having the strength and will to continue carrying out what one wants to achieve despite setbacks and hardships. But in actual fact, self-discipline is more about having self-control or the ability to control your desires and not falling prey to bad habits, such as laziness, procrastination and irresponsibility. In other words, self-discipline is having the willpower to fight your willful desires. When a teenager gets up early and prepares him, herself for online classes, that is self-discipline, as they resist the desire to sleep longer. If a student turns off his, her mobile phone to study peacefully without any distraction, that is self-discipline. Making great efforts to abstain from bad habits, such as smoking or too much gaming, is also self-discipline. So, basically, self-discipline is regulating yourself for the sake of improvement or betterment of your situation. Self-discipline is something difficult to achieve, since it really requires one to battle with one's own self in making the right choice. But true self-discipline is not punishing oneself and it is not supposed to restrict a person's lifestyle or the right for some leisure. It is to make the right choice at the right time when the time calls for it. Like completing your assignment first before playing games. It actually denotes one's mental and inner strength, which is crucial in leading a more meaningful life. Self-discipline grants you freedom freedom from being a slave to your willful desires and wants. It helps you to divide your time wisely between study, work, rest and entertainment. There are specific strategies you can execute to learn self-discipline and gain the willpower to live a happier, more fulfilling life. If you are looking to take control of your habits and choices, here are the 8 most powerful things you can do to master self-discipline, which is imperative for life beyond your comfort zone, and maybe even redefining, extraordinary. We all have weaknesses, whether they're the desire for alcohol, tobacco, unhealthy food, obsession over social media, or the video game Fortnite, what the heck is with this game by the way? They have a similar effect on us. Weaknesses don't just come in the form of areas where we lack self-control either. We all have our strong suits and the stuff we kind of stink at. For example, 
I don't care for having difficult conversations, lengthy paperwork that involves digging up old documents I never saved in the first place, holding my temper when someone is shooting at me, or calling into automated phone systems. And therefore, I used to actively or purposefully avoid these activities. Now, I strive to tackle them head on, or I delegate them to others. Never forget about the subtle art of delegation. Self-awareness is a powerful tool for comfort zone expansion, but it requires constant focus and acknowledging your shortcomings, whatever they may be. I suffered from bad allergies and asthma growing up and had terrible eyesight. Those were some significant weaknesses when considering becoming a Navy SEAL. But so what? I trained hard to improve my lung function and used money I'd saved for LASIK eye surgery. Too often people either try to pretend their vulnerabilities don't exist or they succumb to them with a fixed mindset, throwing their hands up in defeat and saying, oh well. Know your strengths, but more importantly, own up to your flaws. You can't overcome them until you do. Finding your why. Motivation should not come from something outside of ourselves. While the aim of our ambition may be external, the reason for our action must come from within. So many times we are left deflated, wanting to work towards a goal but seemingly having no motivation to get ourselves moving forward. It's easy to get caught up in thinking motivation is this magical thing that springs upon us after watching a video or listening to a talk. But that kind of motivation is an illusion. Real motivation stems from the reason you want to work towards a goal in the first place. So instead of searching for motivation, turn your focus inward and find your own why. This is powerful because you realize you have complete control over your motivation, because you can create it for yourself through understanding your purpose. Come up with one action you'll take. Don't look at the accomplishment of your goal as a whole you must take on all at once. In order to begin utilizing self-discipline, you need to allow the habit to form within yourself. Self-discipline is all about creating habits and routines. That's really the beauty of it. After you hold yourself accountable for long enough, less and less discipline is required. Not because you no longer are performing the action, but because it has turned into a habit. Make it daily. The goal is to make your actions routine so that they do not require so much motivation down the road. For this reason, you need to make it a point to put forth effort towards your goal each day. Now, if you did the following step correctly, you should have one small action you are ready to take. That is what you will make a part of your daily routine for now. When you feel motivation lacking or are having a difficult time disciplining yourself to perform the action each day, refer back to your why. This is the reason you identified that first. It serves as a guiding light throughout the whole process. Slowly start to add more actions. As the first action you decided upon forms into a habit, start adding another. Once that one becomes a habit, add another. What you realize is that at any given time, you're only asking yourself to really be disciplined on one action. All the others have formed into habits. Always keep going back to your why when you feel like quitting or as though the work is not worth it. If your why is strong enough, you'll never be lacking motivation again. Most people have heard the saying, discipline is the key to success, at some point in their life. Whether it's from a teacher, parent, mentor or friend, this old adage is still relevant today. This essay will explore these questions and provide insight into the power of discipline and how it relates to success. Read on to learn more about why discipline is an important tool for achieving your goals. Why is discipline important? So why is discipline important? Because it is the foundation of a successful and meaningful life. It helps us to focus on what is important, develop good habits and achieve our goals. Helps achieve goals Discipline is essential for achieving goals. It helps individuals prioritize long-term goals over short-term pleasures, make and keep commitments, and stay focused on the task at hand. Improves self-control Discipline helps individuals develop self-control, which is the ability to regulate one's emotions, thoughts, and behavior. This leads to better decision-making and more effective communication. Develops good habits Discipline involves cultivating good habits and making positive choices. Over time, these habits become second nature, leading to a more fulfilling and successful life. Enhances productivity Being disciplined helps individuals manage their time more effectively, leading to increased productivity and better outcomes. Boosts confidence When individuals consistently demonstrate discipline in their actions and behavior, they develop a sense of self-confidence and self-esteem, which helps them succeed in their personal and professional lives. Discipline is an important quality in every aspect of life. It is what helps us to achieve our goals, both big and small.
It is the key to success in school, work and relationships. In school, students who are disciplined are more likely to achieve better grades, have better attendance, and be more prepared for exams. How to be disciplined in life? Discipline is a skill that can be learned and developed over time. The more we practice it, the easier it becomes. And as we become more disciplined, we open up new opportunities for success in all areas of our lives. Being disciplined in life is not always easy, but it is an essential quality for success. Set clear goals to be disciplined, you need to have clear goals. Define what you want to achieve, create a plan of action, and stick to it. Set realistic goals for yourself and commit to achieving them. Create a schedule to manage your time effectively, create a schedule and stick to it. Prioritize your tasks and allocate time for each of them. Remember to include time for breaks and rest. Create a daily routine and stick to it as much as possible. Develop positive habits, cultivate positive habits that support your goals. For example, if you want to be healthier, develop a habit of exercising regularly and eating a balanced diet. Make time for self-care and activities that make you happy. Practice self-control, practice self-control by avoiding distractions and temptations that can derail you from your goals. This may mean saying no to activities or people that are not aligned with your goals. Be mindful of your thoughts and actions throughout the day. Focus on the task at hand, when working on a task, stay focused and avoid multitasking. Focus on the most important task first and complete it before moving on to the next one. Learn from mistakes, mistakes are opportunities for growth and improvement. Learn from your mistakes, adjust your plan, and keep moving forward. Be willing to accept feedback from others and learn from your mistakes. Stay motivated, stay motivated by reminding yourself of your goals and why they are important to you. Celebrate your successes and stay positive in the face of setbacks. The first and the most important lesson in life is getting disciplined. It is not tough if the lesson of discipline starts from the very childhood, but if it starts late it can be the toughest lesson to learn in life. To get perfect self-control one requires hard discipline and dedication. Good discipline can bring the best of ourselves and we can best serve society and will be up to the expectation of the people around us. To achieve success in life one needs to be disciplined right from the beginning. Only through discipline, we can stay focused on our goal in life. Discipline involves understanding the value of time, showing respect to humanity, and showing gratitude to nature. The first step towards success is discipline. Being disciplined is one of the important and toughest lessons to learn in life. It requires the utmost dedication and hard work to practice self-control and conduct ourselves in a way that best serves the society and lives around us. Only when a person is disciplined, he or she is able to achieve success in life. Discipline plays a key role in keeping us focused. There are different ways of practicing discipline but the most important thing is to be consistent and value time. By practicing a task consistently, by respecting humanity and nature and by valuing time, one can learn to walk in the right direction in life. Necessity of discipline When a person leads his life without any rule or discipline, his life tends to become dull and directionless. His lack of understanding of the need for discipline makes him lazy. This eventually makes him pessimistic. People such as this are unable to handle crises and often tend to create an irreparable amount of mess in their life. You must focus on being disciplined. If you do not have a plan or strategy then first make a plan that suits your lifestyle and accordingly, set your routine. Expect frustration. Disciplined people trust they grow the most when challenged by optimal levels of frustration. The frustrations that challenge them are the very ones which distinguish them as being a success rather than a failure. When disciplined people are challenged or frustrated, their problem-solving skills are called to the forefront and they stay open and committed. They are willing to be flexible in their approach until they develop the wisdom necessary to succeed. These times of uncertainty challenge disciplined people on all levels and end up determining the strength of their character. Hard working. If we want to succeed we have to be willing to work harder than anyone else. Disciplined people are not satisfied living an average life. They crave testing the edges of who they are and what they can become. They do not mind working extra hours or going to the extra mile if it means they learn something valuable that gets them more quickly and efficiently to the result of their desired outcome. Healthy. Disciplined people understand that to thrive in life or business they first and foremost need to be healthy. For this reason, they do not just focus on being disciplined in their career environment. They commit to eating healthy, they dedicate themselves to an active exercise routine, and make sure to get enough sleep. In my book Success Equations, 
A path to living an emotionally wealthy life it is stated that when we feel good and look good we do better. Mindset. Disciplined people are careful about the thoughts they allow to occupy their mind. They make the conscious choice to think only in terms of success. The attitude they keep is positive. Success isn't going to always come easily. Therefore, their failures are viewed as promotional opportunities which guide them toward their next more successful direction. Disciplined people understand that the way they think will either destroy them or continue to evolve them. Patient. To be disciplined one must be patient. Success is not a vent, but a process. Disciplined people understand that patience is their greatest virtue. Patience doesn't mean waiting and doing nothing until things manifest. It means working hard while they wait and trusting that what is meant to be theirs will come their way. In the meantime, disciplined people continue to work hard to secure new opportunities. They know that with time come the opportunities they are seeking to secure. Willing. Disciplined people are willing. They are willing to listen. They are willing to learn. They are willing to work. They are willing to wait. They are willing to seek guidance. They are willing to change their minds. They are willing to change their ways. They are willing to give their time, their energy and their commitment to the process. Because of this, disciplined people can pivot on a dime whenever necessary to meet their challenge. Because of this, success is nearly guaranteed. Punctual, disciplined people value their time and the time of others. They arrive early to meetings and are fully prepared when their customers come visit with them. Disciplined people make it a habit to keep their meetings, goals and deadlines on a calendar and do all they can to meet their goals and objectives in a timely manner. They make very little time for procrastination when it comes to their urgent matters. For disciplined people, the time is now. They take advantage of a busy schedule by getting their urgent tasks done first which allows them to carve out time for themselves, their family and other personal life necessities that refuel them such as travel. Organized. To be successful disciplined people have an organized system they operate from. They tend to keep copious notes, make lists, have calendars, reminders set on their phones and a daily schedule of events they organize their efforts around. The more organized disciplined people are, the less chaotic their daily events are experienced. Each person has their own way of organizing themselves that works for them. Whatever that way is, disciplined people put their organized system into action each day which allows them to maximize their time and opportunities to the fullest. Accountable. Disciplined people refrain from blaming others when things don't work in their favor. They take accountability for their end of a failure or misunderstanding. If something doesn't work out they analyze what and where things went wrong and take measures to improve going forward. They apologize whenever necessary and do the work it takes to clear up all miscommunications or misperceptions. They value healthy relationship dynamics and aim to be as dependable as possible. Disciplined people understand great businesses are built upon solid and trusted relationships. Resourceful. An important key to being disciplined is not to be rigid, but resourceful. Disciplined people are not afraid to ask for guidance when necessary or to get outside of their comfort zone to establish new patterns of behavior that will help them going forward. If they don't have what they need, disciplined people have a fierce determination to figure out how to secure the things they are missing. These types of people refuse to take no for an answer because they have the resourcefulness to solve their problem in one way or another. Why is self-discipline the key to success? Self-discipline enables consistent effort goal setting, and the ability to overcome challenges. It helps individuals stay focused, make better decisions, and build the habits necessary for long-term achievement. You can never conquer the mountain. You can only conquer yourself. Self-discipline is the ability to push yourself forward, stay motivated, and take action, regardless of how you're feeling, physically or emotionally. You're showing it when you intentionally choose to pursue something better for yourself, and you do it in spite of factors such as distractions, hard work, or unfavorable odds. Self-discipline is different from self-motivation or willpower. Motivation and willpower contribute to it, as do persistence, the ability to follow through on your intentions, and hard work. The Benefits of Self-Discipline Self-discipline can boost your well-being and outcomes in many different areas of your life. It can 1. Help you to achieve goals Self-disciplined people are more likely to commit to, and reach, important long-term life goals. 2. Improve your mental health. People practicing self-discipline report higher levels of self-confidence, happiness and independence. Researchers have also found that self-discipline eases anxiety. 3. Benefit your physical health.
People who demonstrate regular self-discipline often engage in healthy habits and resist unhealthy ones. 4. Improve your relationships. Individuals with high self-discipline often experience stronger long-term relationships. 5. Make you more resilient. Self-discipline can enhance your ability to bounce back from adversity. The more resilient you are, the better control you have over impulses and delayed gratification. 6. Help you to feel happier. If you're more productive, the more creative and happy you are. The more we feel in control of the origin of our behavior, the better sense of well-being we have, and that makes us happy. 7. Improve learning and enhance performance. Studies have shown that students with a high degree of self There's two sides of pain. There's one side of pain that's the suffering and the discomfort side of pain. But then there's another side of pain that's called effort. It's called glory. And if you never tap into it, it's because the first time you felt that you backed off. The first time you felt, ah, that burn. The first time you felt that, ah, it's too much. And we rationalize with ourselves to where we automatically stop. That's why a bunch of us give up so much in life so quickly. But suppose I told you the greatest pain of my life it's the reason I'm standing here today. See, sometimes we think the pain is what controls us. It's actually our subconscious mind that if we ever tapped into that, that's what dictates most of our lives. And literally what I've learned in these moments is that I have to stop listening to myself. And I have trading on a piece of work for an hour without checking your messages or avoiding unhealthy food for one day. Remember, starting small is the best way to start developing your self-discipline. As your discipline gets stronger, you can spread the focus to more areas of your life. Make sure that the goal you set is smart, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound, and break the goal down into smaller sub-goals, where you can. Find your motivation. Once you've chosen a goal, list the reasons why you want to achieve it. Try to express these reasons in a positive way. So, instead of saying, I want to exercise three times a week to lose weight, Say, I want to exercise so that I have the energy to play with my kids and work successfully. Or, instead of saying, I want to get this task off my to-do list, say, I want to do this task, so that I can meet my objectives, get praise from my boss, and feel satisfied with my day's work. When you list the reasons why you want to achieve something, you'll find it much easier to get the job done. Identify obstacles. Now you need to identify the obstacles that you'll likely face when working toward your goal, and devise a strategy for overcoming each one. For instance, imagine that your goal is to read one leadership book a week to enhance your skills. In the past, you've faced a number of obstacles in reaching this goal. For example, when you find a book you like, it's hard to find time each night to read. Between work, dinner and the kids, your time is taken up until late in the evening, and you get distracted by messages coming in while you're reading. Once you've identified obstacles, come up with a strategy to overcome each one. In this example, you could do the following. Instead of going to a bookstore, spend an hour looking at leadership books online. Find several that interest you, and that have good reviews. Order all of them at once, and download them to tablets so that you always have a book on hand to read. Find more time in your day to focus on reading. Perhaps you could read during your lunch hour, or while you're waiting to pick your kids up from school. Turn your phone off when you want to focus on reading. Often our self-discipline crumbles because we haven't identified the obstacles that we'll face, and we haven't developed strategies to overcome them. When these obstacles show up, we're unprepared to deal with them, and this shakes our resolve. Replace old habits. When we're developing self-discipline, we're often trying to break a bad habit and replace it with something more productive. However, if that habit is tied into a certain time of day or routine, breaking it can leave a hole. If we don't replace that habit with something else, then its absence becomes even more noticeable. A good example is if you're trying to stop yourself shopping online when you take a break at work. This bad habit destroys your focus and attention, because you're likely to be online for 20 to 30 minutes each time. Once you've resolved to stop, identify a new behavior that you can engage in when you need a quick break. Instead of online shopping, you could do some stretches in your office, get a cup of coffee, or take a quick walk outside. These behaviors will help to support your goal and strengthen your self-discipline, instead of leaving you with nothing to do on your break. Monitor your progress. 
As you work on your self-discipline, pay attention to how you're feeling as it develops and strengthens. You might feel free, happy, proud, and energized. Also, think about keeping a journal to write down your self-discipline goals and to track your progress. This reinforces the positive changes that you're implementing in your life, and gives you a record that you can look back on to see the progress that you've made. Over time, your self-discipline will strengthen, and you'll be able to apply it to lots of other areas of your life. How to set a goal? First consider what you want to achieve, and then commit to it. Set smart, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time-bound goals that motivate you and write them down to make them feel tangible. Then plan the steps you must take to realize your goal, and cross off each one as you work through them. Goal setting is a powerful process for thinking about your ideal future, and for motivating yourself to turn your vision of this future into reality. The process of setting goals helps you choose where you want to go in life. By knowing precisely what you want to achieve, you know where you have to concentrate your efforts. You'll also quickly spot the distractions that can, so easily, lead you astray. Why set goals? By setting sharp, clearly defined goals, you can measure and take pride in the achievement of those goals, and you'll see forward progress in what might previously have seemed a long pointless grind. You will also raise your self-confidence, as you recognize your own ability and competence in achieving the goals that you've set. Starting to set personal goals. You set your goals on a number of levels. First you create your big picture of what you want to do with your life or over, say, the next 10 years and identify the large-scale goals that you want to achieve. Then, you break these down into the smaller and smaller targets that you must hit to reach your lifetime goals. Finally, once you have your plan, you start working on it to achieve these goals. This is why we start the process of setting goals by looking at your lifetime goals. Then, we work down to the things that you can do in, say, the next five years, then next year, next month, next week, and today, to start moving towards them. What is self-confidence, and why is it important? Self-confidence means trusting in your own judgment, capacities and abilities. One, it's about valuing yourself and feeling worthy, regardless of any imperfections or what others may believe about you. Self-efficacy and self-esteem are often used interchangeably with self-confidence but they are subtly different. We gain a sense of self-efficacy when we see ourselves mastering skills and achieving goals. This encourages us to believe that, if we learn and work hard in a particular area, we'll succeed. 2. It's this type of confidence that leads people to accept difficult challenges and keep going in the face of setbacks. Self-esteem is a more general sense that we can cope with what's going on in our lives, and that we have a right to be happy. Also, self-esteem comes, in part, from the feeling that the people around us approve of us. We may or may not be able to control this, and if we experience a lot of criticism or rejection from others, our self-esteem can easily suffer unless we support it in other ways.